And hello again, this is Philip at thebestready.com and uh, hello again. It's been a while since I did uh, find the time to do a recording. Um, here's a quick tutorial on sort of a follow-up to a prior tutorial. Um, this one is uh, part of the River series, uh, River uh, Canyon series, but it's kind of the end of it and we're exploring some other types of canyons. Uh, and in fact, we're going into caves and uh, towards the end of this, there's all sorts of uh, fancy caves, uh, structures, uh, some of them animated. And um, we wanted to, uh, somebody asked the question as to how to actually create those. Um, so I wanted to explore a little bit what are the techniques and what are the tools that I used to create some of these in Dog Waffle, uh, PD Howler. You see here, uh, there is a mirroring action, obviously. The upper half and the lower half are identical, but uh, as it's animated, it's doing some really uh, interesting things. And so, particularly this one I like a lot. Um, and so there's some lighting and, you know, uh, you know basically a cave-like structure with stalactites or stalagmites. So um, let's go and see if we can uh, focus on some of the tools needed to do that. Uh, I'm going to go and create a very quick rendering of some sort of a, a night sky. Uh, not the sky sky, but uh, maybe the animated starry night, something like that. Uh, that was not even it either. You know what, um, maybe just making it uh, start from... Um, hold on a second, there's got to be a render something for that. Uh, why can I never find it? Boom, 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 boom. Noises, radiant sky... Doo, 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 doo. Maybe it is animated. Starry night... I cannot seem to find it. <laughs> uh, where is it? And you know, after a few seconds, if I can't find it, I will just have to paint it myself. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go uh, erase the whole thing to black. Right click the erase tool and clear it to black. And then I'm going to go to my brush tool because it is a paint program after all. Um, let's go and use something like uh, organic effects. There is some stars there, starry, there you go. Now that's too dense, I need the steps to be a little bit bigger. There you go. And uh, perhaps the opacity a little bit higher and then also make it additive. Uh, that would be the mode. Oh, it already is, okay. So essentially if we, um, if we erase this to black, right click to black, and then kind of plaster these stars all over. Um, we have probably a couple of spikes there. Actually, a lot of spikes. Uh, maybe we can add a little bit of uh, something to that. Uh, just uh, noise or rendering the plasma noise, but in the additive mode. So uh, let's say multiply or additive, something like that. And so, so that way we have, and perhaps we can uh, do the interactive undo a little bit there. So for the most part it's pretty dark and there will be low elevation, but there's a couple of spikes here or there and they will kind of simulate the stalactites and stalagmites. Uh, one thing I want to do also is make it uh, seamless so I can keep flying through it. Uh, perhaps go in a little bit more like that. And there you go. Alright, so I'm going to go store this image. And so now um, let's have a look at it through the 3D Designer or Puppy Ray. Let's try 3D Designer here. Right, with 3D Designer, uh, you can see now all these spikes. Uh, if you if you do too much pre-filtering, they'll go lower. They won't go that that detailed high. But if you reduce the pre-filter to uh, zero, you'll get very detailed spikes there, and you can further e and exaggerate those. Uh, so that's one thing, but it's only half of the cave, right? As you rotate this, you can see it uh, come up from the ground, or as you rotate it too much, you can see it come down from the ground. But what we really want to do is both at the same time. And so there is a mirror function. Let's go cancel this for the time. There is a mirror function. If you are, for instance, on the brush tool, you'll see in the context bar that there is a mirror function right here, the symmetry tool, really. And there's a couple of options there. When you click that, you'll see the symmetry tool for painting. So as you're painting, it's going to symmetrically paint also on the other side, uh, vertical or horizontal. There's even a kaleidoscope mode with multiple 
mirror copies, uh, but then there's the horizontal mirror and the vertical mirror. And that one applies to the current image. doesn't matter whether you're painting something right now at this moment. It's whatever is in the image gets mirrored. So I'm going to go vertical mirror, and that means that the bottom half is the same as the top half. But that's the important thing to understand, is that whatever is at the top half is what's the source, and that gets mirrored down to the bottom. So it's not working from the bottom, and that's important because if you go into the 3D designer, you have to remember where is your 3D designer or your terrain going to appear. And so now I have the mirroring enabled and uh, remember normally the, the design would be, the terrain would be at the bottom uh, and if you move it down it gets to disappear and the mirror is not going to bring it up to the top. The mirror is only showing at the bottom what happens to already be at the top. So that's the first thing you need to do. You need to make sure that the terrain is appearing at the top. Then as you rotate it or as you move it around you'll also see it at the bottom. Now, one way, by the way, to enable that mirror is, as I showed you earlier, you can go to that mirror tool here if you're outside of 3D Designer, right? Once you're in 3D Designer, though, there's also an option here. So you can actually do that right there. You can toggle it on and off right in here. You can toggle the mirror also horizontally, right? And so there's all sorts of funky stuff that happens when this 3D transform uh, is occurring and is also being mirrored. Uh, so that's a fun experiment right there. Uh, but so that's essentially where it started to look interesting. Um, then we want to also obviously add some erosion and some sediments and all that stuff. I'm not going to go too much into that detail. What I do want to do is uh, add a little bit of lighting. So the ray trace, uh, maybe soft shadows. Um, maybe we want to bring these two closer together, but not totally uh, flatten them. Uh, we want to kind of keep it a little bit open, but uh, let's see if we bring it exactly parallel um, You can you can see perhaps we want to bring them closer together So we need to move with the y-axis here move the y down and then the bottom half is going to come up here too Maybe we can bring the altitude a little bit higher so you start seeing them Connecting like this now, you notice also as you're moving things around it's shifting into a lower resolution And then when you let go it shows you the full detail again uh, What else do we need uh, a, b a little bit on the shading so the lighting normally we have two light sources the top one here is the one that's casting the shadows uh, And that one what we'd like to do is have it relatively low so it kind of shines into the the opening gaps there on the side or you know, in the back uh, it appears to be, um, let's see, Zenith, not too far, make it a little bit brighter. Adjust those uh, like you would usually for terrains out outdoors. Uh, but then there's also the light range here, and this one is really sort of a top light usually. Uh, what you want to do is, is use that to control sort of an ambient lighting appearing here without particular direction. It's actually coming from the top. Uh, if you put the altitude to the top and the Zenith down, low and so with that you can give it a bit of a basic uh, lighting um, I think that's about it just to focus on the mirror part right so so we have the mirror and now we want to animate it right so in, in, it depends on which tool you're using if you're using 3d designer uh, there is either an animate function here if you already have created a timeline uh, the, the, the placeholders for the animation so I'm gonna cancel here and actually create that animation First, I'm going to go and create an animation that is uh, going to be, let's say, uh, 123 frames and create that. Then I'm going to store that because I may want to go back to it a few times. So I'm going to go to create, excuse me, animation, store animation to disk. And if you have a fast SSD, uh, it will be faster. Uh, but here it is, a stored copy of this. Now I can go into the animation again with the 3D Designer. So 3D Designer, here we go. It remembers the most recent settings. And what I'd like to do is really kind of fly into it. So I need to, to start from outside perhaps and make sure that it's not cropping here, not showing the, the edge of it. <coughs> um, I want to perhaps bring it a little bit closer and also a little bit closer together. Right. Perhaps move them down a little bit the y-axis. And you could also adjust the perspective angle here. That will make a nice amount of, of depth. Something like this. 
Uh, and so uh, the idea is basically to move the z-axis, right? The animation, what you want to do is you want, if you want to do a quick sequence where you move into this, you want the animation to look like that. Now there's perhaps also some depth queuing, the fog, the fog level, right? something like this. Uh, there could be fog on the ground, but remember because it's a mirrored, it will show the fog both above and below. Right? But that could all add to the mood. Uh, there could be clouds and other things too. Uh, so what what I want to do is animate the Z, the Z, the depth. The question is, am I going negative or am I positive? Right. If if I look here, in order to move in, I'm actually moving to the left. I'm moving this value, the Z value, to the left. So I probably need to reduce the Z value as I move in closer, deeper into this cave. And so that's the thing to remember, I think. And you know, if it if it's wrong, then it's just the opposite. So let's try this. Let's go and animate, and say that we want uh, there's uh, three angles and three positional elements we can change in this animation, right? Uh, plus the the mesh is not changing. So in this case, I'm going to go keep it static. That will make it a little bit faster. But what I want to do is uh, see the heading, the pitch, and the B stands for, I forget what angle, bank there, heading, pitch, bank, H, P, B. Those values, the speed of the heading, the speed of the, bi uh, of the pitch, and the speed of the bank uh, are going to be staying the same in this animation. All I'm going to do is speed the Z, that's going to be the position, move X, Y, Z, speed for X, Y, Z. I'm going to just change the Z. But I want to make this movement go into the scenes. I need to move the camera negative. That's what we saw here. That's what we determined. When I had the Z value pushed to the left, presumably reducing it, uh, we should ba therefore we should probably do something like a negative one on the speed. And I will keep deducting some amount of positional information. Now whether that's enough or too much or too little, we'll just find out by trying it. And there we go. That's probably fairly decent. Maybe you want to fly through it faster, give it a bigger number. I mean, really a lower number, negative 2, negative 1.5, something like that. But we now just have created this little animation, and that may be just good enough for what we need initially. Now, the rendering is not the very best quality. You see a lot of scintillation here, a lot of noise. Uh, that's for two reasons. One is I did not uh, create the the proper amount of uh, anti-aliasing. So if I go back to filter, transform, 3D designer, uh, that's where I would be able to actually say AA level was off. Let's go bring it up higher, like five, right? Or maybe three or two might be enough, but just a little bit more anti-aliasing than off. So let's try that, animate it, and we'll keep it at negative. Let's make it negative two this time, so we fly through this a little bit faster. We see it takes a little bit longer to render though, and that's hopefully the anti-aliasing working for us. And there you go. We still have actually. I'm not sure if that anti-aliasing really was taking effect. So here's another place where we can go to create this kind of animation, of course, right? Uh, let me go back to this. This time I'm going to go use the timeline. Since I already have an animation, I can go to the timeline editor, and there is the same 3D designer here somewhere. If I click three times on the scroll bar, I'll see the transform category, and there's a 3D designer right there. So I'm going to go and move, <coughs> initially set the parameters here that the way I want them. Maybe I want the very best anti-aliasing 5, and OK that. Now I have five parameters, or six parameters, that I can change here again. And so here is the Z, X, Y, and Z value, and that's how you'll be able to move into that scene just the same way. Now sometimes you get too close and you need to actually move up a little bit. So that's when you use these other parameters as well. All right. The idea is that, okay, in this preview you only see the top part. It's not actually applying the mirror, and you have to kind of guess what it's going to look like. All right, so hopefully that's going to be decent. Let's do the following. I'm going to go reset this. It's going to take me back into 3D Designer. I want to uh, perhaps move this up a little bit more and have a little bit more extrusion on the other hand. And let's see if the cl uh, maybe the fog needs to be closer. Something like this. Or if I reduce the camera zoom. There's so many different parameters to play with here. All right, so let's say I, I use this. 
and I'm going to go and adjust the position in such a way that I'm clearly inside this already. But this time I'm going to go keyframe things, right? So I'm going to go set a keyframe here, and then towards the end, I want to be quite a bit into that scene, so I'm bringing the Z value down into negative territory. Something like this. Keyframe that. In between, though, I may want to also be a little bit to the side, so rotate it right in this view here. You could do all sorts of cranky things here, uh, and even even bank it a little bit. Really weird. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna do, and you can readjust the position of that keyframe. And so now I'm gonna go and uh, keyframe and apply that. Right. So. Now it's going through each of these frames and it's applying that anti-aliasing. Now the thing is that that anti-aliasing takes quite a while. It's uh, you know level four, level five. It's probably rendering it 25 times, uh, and and with off-pixel um, uh, offset, and and so it it takes quite a while to render that. I probably should not have asked for all of these just for this demo. It's going to take a little bit too long. I'm not going to wait for all that. Uh, but actually, this is also where you know you sometimes do only a, a small amount of frames, and then you have the rest done with the motion predicted interpolation, or or you just reduce the the quality on the anti-aliasing because in the end maybe it's not going to be it's maybe it's not going to have to stay all that crisp. Maybe you're going to blur it, or maybe you're going to add motion blur, and uh, you might not need it to take that long for rendering. But anyway, that's one of the starting points for uh, creating some of these caves. Uh, where the uh, the content is either static or you might even have some animation in the content itself. So the, the elevation map that dictates how the terrain evolves, that can be an animation itself. The, the starting point here was a static image with all these spikes, but um, <laughs> you could certainly have actually some of that in motion and you don't need to move the camera, you'll just see the ground floor uh, elevation uh, based ground floor animate by itself and the mirror is what's taking care of uh, showing it on the bottom side at the same time as where you have it initially at the top. So that's the trick with that. That's how you create some of these caves and uh, you know I encourage you to try animating these parameters not just in the sense of moving in or moving sideways but also the one that changes the angle um, so that you, you get these, it looks like jaws opening or it looks like some really strange uh, creatures or structures like continents colliding and uh, overturning, all sorts of uh, weird stuff that can come out of using the mirror, uh, either the vertical mirror or the horizontal or both. Uh, and uh, have fun with that. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll talk to you soon again.